which soda cans float, which sink, and why. Enlightening experiments for lighthearted students. Uh, who has a question? I do, sir. I was at a party where they had cans of soda floating in ice water. Some of the cans sank, and some of them floated. I've seen that, too. What about you, little buddy? I don't drink soda. The caffeine makes me jittery. Professor Skeptic, do you know why some cans float and some cans sink? Of course I know why, but I'll turn this into a lesson on the scientific method. Here's a video of an experiment I did about this. Let's try a mug root beer. It sinks. Now let's try a Barks root beer. It bubbles a little, but it sinks. Let's try a Diet Pepsi. It floats. I can't get it to sink. Try a regular Pepsi, made with real sugar, it says. It sinks. Here's our observation. Sodas sweeten with artificial sweeteners. Float, but those with real sugar sink. Mr. Stokes formulate a hypothesis from this observation. I would say that the cans with fake sugar weigh less than the cans with real sugar. A good hypothesis. I wrote it this way. Cans of soda with artificial sweetener weigh less than cans with sugar. Now let's test this hypothesis. The mug root beer weighs 389 grams. Bark's root beer weighs 389 grams. Diet Pepsi, 369 grams. Regular Pepsi, 386 grams. Here's the summary of the weights. Our observation is that cans of soda with artificial sweetener indeed weigh less than soda cans with sugar. But why, Mr. Drummer, formulate a hypothesis from this observation? Well, I suppose that for the same level of sweetness, artificial sweeteners have less mass than sugar does. Okay, now we have another hypothesis. I wrote it that for the same amount of sweetness, artificial sweeteners weigh less than sugar. Can any of you think of a good way to test this hypothesis? I heard that sweetener packs have the same sweetness whether they're fake sugar or real sugar. I can feel that these ten sweet and low packs weigh less than the real sugar packs. Great observation, Mr. Nerdly. But where did you get all those sweetener packs? I, 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 I don't... I... Uh, never mind. I don't eat that fake sugar. I need all the calories I can get to stay fit. You won't say that when you're in your 60s. I propose that we test the hypothesis by weighing equal amounts of each. Great idea. Let's test this hypothesis. I tested with Splenda, since Splenda claims to be a direct substitute for sugar, volume to volume. This is what they put on their label. I used a small plastic cup. Its mass is so small, it doesn't even register on our gram scale. So we'll measure equal volumes, filling the cup with each, the Splenda and the sugar. First, we weigh this little container of sugar. It weighs about 59 grams. Then we replace the sugar with Splenda, same amount, in the same container. It weighs about 10 grams. Here's a summary of the results. The real sugar indeed weighs more than artificial sweetener. For Splenda, it's a factor of 5.9 in conclusion. Since artificial sweeteners weigh less than sugar with the same sweetness, cans of diet soda float, but cans of regular soda sink. This lesson really helped us, sir. Thank you, Professor. Now I have a better feel for how to test and formulate hypotheses. Good. You'll be applying this method the rest of your careers. All this talk about sodas is making me thirsty. Here's my favorite soda, Mountain Dew. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.